Hi, everybody. I'm Mackenzie. Welcome to Unfiltered Legends. In each episode, John the Legend Boker talks to pool and spa people, professionals, service techs, pool owners about their experiences, the ups, the downs, the funny and the sad. Well, actually, they filter out the sad. We're here to entertain, but you might learn a few things along the way. In today's episode, we scout Mike Shadowin, a crafty right-hander with an okay fastball, but a passion for great customer service. As vice president of automatic pool covers, Mike has seen the auto cover business hit it out of the park, even when the supply chain is experiencing a rain delay. Batter up. Move the actual computer up. It makes you look thinner. (laughs) That's the deal. Mount it to the ceiling. (laughs) Legend. Today, we're talking APC, IUPUI, and ROI. Is this Law & Order SVU? It's just another episode of Unfiltered Legends. He lost all his money because he picked up a hitchhiker after Vietnam. I'm upstairs by myself in a closet. Just got more awkward. (laughs) The least popular podcast ever. (laughs) That is a rough start. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get in the pool industry? Well, what's amazing is I lived across the street from the people that owned automatic pool covers. I grew up best friends with their son, and it was the mother and father, Mike and Mary Shebeck, who purchased a distributorship for cover pools at the time from Salt Lake City, but in Indianapolis. So I just grew up, it was like a little tight neighborhood. We all played sports out in the fields, and we just got became really close friends. And then as they grew, you know, they were doing 10 or 20 covers a year. Um, so as they grew, they, they needed more technical help. And so, hey, man, the sun, you know, working out in the sun, you know, staying strong, didn't hurt with the ladies. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's how we, we just, I just started helping out as a helper, technical help, going out, doing installs, service calls with Michael, the son, who um, eventually bought out the parents. So when he he actually bought them out around 2000, we started manufacturing in 2003. Everything was in Salt Lake City or Utah area. So we're in Indiana in the Midwest. So whenever we ordered something, we had to wait a week or two to get the product. Kudos to Michael for realizing that at the time. And he's like, man, we need to get into manufacturing. So we aren't being dictated by the other manufacturers. So that's what we did and went from a small distributor to where we are now and, you know, selling around the country and some international sales. And it's just blown up. It's amazing. And, and the industry is too, obviously, right now, but it's, uh, it's just a good time. So how did you get the call as your buddy's starting all this stuff up? Does he call you and says, hey, uh, I need another guy to go down in flames with me if we don't succeed? Or what do we, what happened? I need a drinking buddy? Yeah, that's well, basically, yeah. So uh, at the time, so from Indianapolis, we were servicing Louisville, Cincinnati, Chicago, you know, the bigger, some of the bigger cities. And so it would be, it, generally it would be an overnight. So we'd go work, spend the night, go out a little bit, have some fun, and then work the next day. But that was the draw at the time. I didn't have anything else really going on. So it was a good way to, good summer job. And lo and behold, did I figure out I'd be there for 30 years and that would be my main career. So you joined in 92. When you guys jumped into manufacturing, what was your role in the company then? Where were you on the on the tier? At that time, I was in charge of dealer sales, basically. We were going through this period of working with distributors or selling dealer direct. Uh, what we found out at the time is there was very few distributors that were able to, to learn all the technical parts of auto covers. It's not like you're, you're buying an SKU and, and marking it up and selling it. It's very technical. We felt the uh, the dealer was having the best success buying directly from us. We just had to uh, compete with the delivery to the backyard. That was the toughest, the toughest thing. But man, there's there as you guys know, there's so many good people in our industry that, that that's what makes it so much fun. I mean, they're lifelong friends. Man, those, some of those guys will just do anything for you, and vice versa. So when you made that change in 03, were you worried about the culture shock difference from going from a sales company to a manufacturing company? Absolutely. Oh, man. so we were, we were hiring, you know, electrical engineers coming in and just working with us. And we're trying to put together the best system, you know, from everyone else's system and things that we liked, trying to put it into one. But yeah, it's, see that first one go out to where we are now. It's, it's truly amazing. I'm going to take you back a little bit. All right. You were at 
I U P U I. Based on your nice. degree, I'm going to say you were an athlete <laughs> that's because right. that's like a classic on scholarship or, or something close degree. That's it. Yeah, were you playing? Were you playing baseball at the time? Yep, that was it. I did. So I played there. I actually went to. I started at I U, Indiana University in Bloomington. Got cut in the spring as a freshman, and then ended up going back to IUPUI and playing there. You know, for scholarship and free free school. You know, when that was going on, that was that was a lot of fun. But I would still find time to work, even part time, doing some other things too. So it wasn't I was exclusive APC since you know '92, but I was always involved there. Because I even tried uh, after I got done playing, I actually was the head coach there for three years too. Yeah, I saw that. That's a young head coach. I was the youngest head coach in the nation. Yeah, it was really cool. We had a good team. That was fun to do, but I was making two hundred and fifty dollars a month. As the That's head coach making. or working for a That's month. it. Two hundred and fifty dollars a month, yeah. I had I figured right then my credit cards were getting maxed. I had to I could only do it for three years. That was it. Time to time to earn a living. So I find I found this odd because Brezza sent me the thing and I and I saw the college and, and I'm like, I don't know what that school is. And I, I'm like, is that where Dane Fife went? I'm like, hang on a second. He he was the, he was the head coach again, one of the younger head coaches. And I'm like, is Indiana got a thing of hiring younger guys Isn't to that coach funny? Uh, school yeah, sports? So he, uh... Yeah, I, I grew up with the Fife, oh, so okay, that's why okay. I, I say that. Yeah, yeah, I grew up same town. Played football with Dugan. Dugan yeah, was a freshman yeah. when I was a senior. Yeah. It was a little different, but I I heard that and I went, man, Indiana's got a thing for. Hiring young guys to coach athletics. <laughs> young guys. Yeah, I figured out what it is. They don't have to pay them very much. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the show. Stay on the know on all Legendary Pools and Spas tutorials, interviews, and articles by following Legendary Pools and Spas on Facebook at Legendary PLS. Have an idea for an episode or want to learn more about a topic? Shoot us a message. Click like and follow Legendary Pools and Spas on Facebook at Legendary PLS. I still actually, believe it or not, I, I still play to this day. Next week, there's a there's a national tournament in Las Vegas. I'm, I'm flying over and playing next weekend. I've been pitching it every year since I was five. Every year. I've never taken a, a year off. Luckily, I've been healthy and no arm problems. So, did you try and make it go for the for the big time or no? You know what? I I never threw hard enough. I, I threw 88, 89 was the hardest in college. But for a right hander, if you were left handed, you could you could <laughs> string a career along in Korea for like fourteen years. <laughs> exactly, you're exactly right. <laughs> I'll tell you what's interesting is my, my best friend, Michael Shebeck, the guy who owns the company now, growing up, his dad got drafted, I think, by the Cardinals. And so he taught his son how to pitch. And of course, I was always around, so I would catch him. And then so he started teaching me how to pitch. So it was constantly, you know, he built a mound in his backyard, very uh, strict, like you had to practice certain times of the day. And so his son, Michael, actually went to Ball State and played. He was drafted twice, actually, but he never he never went. Yeah, he got drafted in later rounds. It's a very uh, good passion of ours, like our culture. And so sometimes we'll even design parts with a little baseball, something that like our little in pulley looks like home plate on purpose. <laughs> like that's the kind of the nice. cool stuff. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. I got three boys. Two of them are playing baseball, and I tell them there's there are so few ways to be a professional. You could be the best player in your in your school, in your county, in your state, and never make a dime from it. True. But I also tell uh, the pool industry, you could start as the bottom guy <laughs> and be, could be the VP in yeah. four years in a lot of these places. So Always hope. Always hope. <laughs> Think about that. So let's talk a little bit about automatic pool covers as a company what's what's the environment like there what's the climate like awesome like you saw the place on the outside you know it's really phenomenal he's very low key there's no there's no signs on the side of our building you don't even know the name of it that's just the kind of way Michael is. He's, he wants to keep it a little tight, doesn't want to flash the name out there a bunch. But you walk inside and it is, it's a palace. I mean, it is just very well kept, very clean. Um, and he really takes care of the employees to, to the point of uh, just, just two nights ago, we had our company meeting virtual. And, you know, he's having tears, talking about moments and 
uh, he, he just really cares. And that's what's cool. He's, that family's been that way since day one. And it's more about culture, is trying to find those right people. Because at first, you know, we were hiring friends and friends of friends. You know, we we're trying to bring in the people we knew. But you get so big, you have to start bringing in some talent. And to get those talented people involved, to believe in the culture, that's a trick. We're doing the best we can with that. You know, it's, t- it's tough hiring people right now. So we're still trying to push that culture. So to that point, how has COVID affected that culture? I mean, that's, yeah. you're saying everyone's working, you know, the office people are starting to work from home. So that, it's tough. that plays a toll mentally on people that are, that are family oriented, right? You're used to being around these people. Oh, no doubt. No doubt, because, there, you know, there's family members working in, the, in charge of the back in, in the facility who's, you know, having to wear masks 10, 12 hours a day, yeah. you know, when the office people are at home getting to do whatever they want, you know, the, that's what they think. But, sure. But it's, yeah, it's tough. That is a, that is a very difficult thing because they've had the, they had a, a really difficult time this year. You know, who wants to work with a mask on, you know, for eight to 10, 12 hours a day, right? That is tough. Yeah. So did y'all ever have to shut the factory down? We did for a couple days right at the beginning we did so we were doing one shift you know like a 10 12 hour shift and then we had to break it up into two shifts because what we were afraid if someone got sick in one of the shifts and passed it on that we would be we would be done for a while but that time of year yeah. it was it's getting hectic so we split it up did two shifts we actually got pretty lucky anybody that we you know we did a daily check just started doing everything that you know everyone else was doing temperatures and any any chance of anyone feeling like they might have it you know some of those happen on fridays though you know <laughs> one of the three-day weekend right. right before happy hour amazing how yeah. much that that covid kicked in on a thursday night when did you guys figure out that 2020 was going to be that year instead of we're closing the doors it was holy cow <laughs> yeah it was crazy. I mean, when that first happened, I mean, we panicked. We panicked. We, I mean, we had this meeting, late night meeting, and we're like, all right, that's it. Like, Shadow, we're going to get, my nickname's Shadow. Everyone calls me Shadow because we have too many mics in the place. So just everybody knew it was me. So they're like, well, we're going to shut down. Well, we, I mean, we were cutting off cable. We were cutting off XM satellite radio. We were, I mean, everything. We thought, man, we're going to have to just streamline this. And then, you know, three, four weeks later, the boom kicks in. We didn't see it. We didn't see it coming at all. I don't think any of still. Them did. I mean, it, and now you know, being in the manufacturing world, you know, when you're when you're supplying thousands and thousands of parts, you're out of one part, you can't ship the system, or you're back ordering, or you, you can't bill for it. So one little thing from a vendor, and you're you're done. In terms of that pipeline of products, if a hundred percent is you've got everything going out on exactly the right time, where are you in that process right now? R- right now, I would say like so uh, the turnaround time. Normally for us is a two to three day turnaround time from order to ship. During that, there was parts where we were backed up about two, three weeks. Uh, Our competition got to six to eight weeks. To to compound all of that for you guys, automatic covers have been booming over the past, I don't know how many years. Now all of a sudden you got all these new pool sales that all these new pools with auto covers going on. And it's a... yeah, I, I can't imagine. And, and to say that, you know, you guys are still getting that no. turnaround time, that's yeah. really impressive. I mean, you know, kudos to you guys. That's huge. Thank you. Yeah. And, it, you know, we're not at the apex of, of the year, but, you know, sales right now, I think we're, we were up 220% as the last week, year to date. I mean, that, wow. and being able to pump that out and still say, you know, four to five days, that's, yeah. it is, it is good. Are you working out of your house or are you working out of the office? Out of the house. I've been, I've been working out of the house almost for a year wow oh really pretty much i go in maybe once once a week for three or four hours that's about it all right yeah we've kind of shifted we've shifted everything we've all of our uh dealer support personnel that take take the calls and everything they're all working from home orders just get funneled into work and processed that way now all our manufacturing plant everybody's still working out back yeah most of the office is is uh working from home chlorine shortage giving you heartburn? If so, reach for borates. Borates, like those in Proteam Supreme. They help keep water balanced so your sanitizer works better. They work with all sanitizers and they're the perfect complement to salt chlorine pools. Ask your supplier about Proteam Supreme or Proteam Supreme Plus. Visit ProteamPoolCare.com to learn more.
when we started, you know, we were the Midwest, basically. That's that's That was our territory. That's what we sold to. So over the last 10 years, and, and a push from, from Michael was that, listen, in the wintertime, we're so dead. We don't do anything, right? No one's putting in pools in the wintertime, really. You can't just live on indoor pools or, you know, we figured out earlier that, hey, we need to we need to move to some warm weather climates to get more year round business because anything we would sell in the winter is just gravy because we have the inventory. You know, we pushed in, you know, in the California area, a lot of covers are so popular there. Texas, not so much in Florida, but southeast for us, the main business was like Interstate 70. You know, for us, because it's a year round cover, those areas that experience the four seasons, the snow, everything, in most instances, it can just be the year round cover and that's all you have to worry about. And I hear Canada's a big market for you because it's real warm up there. (laughs) Canada? (laughs) It is. You know what's funny is no one would think like Minnesota, right? Minnesota, the swimming season is so short, but man, there's a lot of covers there. Ontario, just that short window, you would think, man, who wants a pool for three months or four months? But man, they're just getting so popular up there. Really are. Yeah, we talked we talked to Alan Horwood in Vancouver. He he saw this auto cover thing becoming so big that that's all he does. Yeah. Do you see more guys specializing? Yeah, I'll tell you what I do see. Um I see, I see both things happening. I see companies that are doing their own installs that now have that, the demand is so great for pools that they're starting to give that up to other people to do for them. You know what? I'll just, you do it for me and I'll mark it up and sell it. I'm seeing a, a lot of it, you know, a lot of that because of, of the demand of the pool. But also this industry is getting very old as far as the people that started 30 years ago. You know, they're about aging out, wanting to sell, wanting to, you know, get out, let the let the younger kids come back in or or their kids. So that knowledge isn't getting passed on as much. So it just depends if you're only doing a handful of covers a year. You kind of forget how to put them in. If you're doing 100 a year, I mean, you don't forget. You're doing it every day. So you put in the installs a little better and probably less chance of warranty. What's the percentage that you see of the automatic pool cover is the winter cover versus an extra one? That extra one, most of those lake effect areas, you know, the buffaloes, the who just get pounded with snow. I mean, because for us, it's 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 a year round cover. It works well. As long as the water level stays fairly high, our, our cover can support all kinds of weight. If that water level were to drop, then our cover has nothing to sit on and support. And so then something's got to give either the tracks pull in cover rips. The way they're being made now and how strong they are, and this is not just ours, it's it's others too, that it'll pull in pool walls and coping. And wow. It's a major expense if that water level were to drop. So that's the key to the whole thing. For folks who are closing their pools over the winter who drop their water level, what's, what's the trick there? Yeah, the trick is to leave it up. There's a lot of people that used to drop the water, blow out the lines, cap them, and leave the water down, right? Now we're hearing a lot of, you know, you're blowing out the lines with the water up, capping them, putting the antifreeze in, but keeping the water level up, whether it's using a, what are those, uh, gizmos or in in the skimmers to, you know, old milk cartons that people used to do, right? Stick them down in there. And so it would allow for the freeze thaw. Yeah. Keeping that water level up year round is important. And the only issue that you see occasionally is that on gunite pools where you have tile all the way around, if that water levels on the tile, when that water freezes, could start to to pop some of that tile off. It's happening a lot this year. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, especially where you are, right? Yeah, rarely. Of course, we don't use frost-proof tile here. Oh, okay. I've heard some horror stories. Yeah, Yeah, it's painful watching ours freeze over. I was like, oh. I've heard 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. I I don't know. Does anybody have a guess, better guess on that? Um. I mean, I don't know a number. I don't even know how many pools there are here. I would estimate probably 80, 85% of our pools are damaged with severe damage. The filters, I mean, I've seen filters crack before. These look like dynamite has gone off inside of them. Pump housing's gone. Every two and three way valve, backwash valve, boost pumps, every heater manifold is, I mean, it's, bad. Oh, I was wow. talking to a service guy earlier this week and I said, realistically, with the equipment shortages, do you think we'll have all the pools fixed this year? It didn't take a second. He goes, absolutely not. There's no wow. way. Wow. 
I've heard that people are worried that that inventory is being drawn from different distributors, yeah. you know, maybe northern distributors. So just another possibility of delay of getting equipment. Yeah, and the plaster, you know, if somebody had a bested pop and their pole drained down or their spa drained and then that water froze. A busted what? A busted pipe. A busted what? It was too southern for you, Johnny. I'm sorry. Can I get subtitles? <laughs> It sounded more like a pop. I, I didn't know what a pop. Like if a pop busted, their pool drained, spa drained, and then that water froze on the plaster, that plaster shot. And so we got that. We've got towel. Okay. It's just a mess here. And that's not even talking about the houses that people can't even live in because the pops are busted. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't even really thinking of that. I wasn't thinking that either. That's, I mean, a lot of houses have damage. So a lot of people still living in hotels. I know we call it the melt day. It was the Monday after. You couldn't find PVC. You couldn't find PVC glue. Uh, I don't know what the situation is now, but yeah, it's not good. Wow. It's a lot worse than I was thinking. And it took a long time just to get drinking water. Mm. The military had to fly it in. I mean, it's not been fun. Wow. We'll get through it. You aren't in your closet because you had water damage or something. No, we <laughs> lucked out. <laughs> We lucked out so bad. Like we were, people were calling, you know, panicked, asking us what they could do for their pool. And we almost felt guilty because we never lost power. And of course, we're on a well. So if we lost power, we would have lost water. I mean, some of the cities, it took over two weeks to get their residents wow. running water. We're lucky we live out in the country. And I think there was just so few of us on the grid. They're like, nah, they can stay. Shut the cities down. <laughs> But I remember, you know, working at home shows and flower and patio shows for automatic pool covers. And people are walking by. That they have no idea what our product is. <laughs> They've never seen it. Good luck. You never sell any. We never sold any in a, in a home show. But we were just trying to get the name out there. Fast forward to today, everyone, everyone knows. They just want it. They don't even know that much about it. But the interesting thing is in our market, you're able to have a, uh, it's a state code. You can have an auto cover in lieu of a fence. Cost of the two could be similar, but Here's the strange thing is that depending in the neighborhood you live, the covenant, that could supersede the state code. And so, no, you can only have a fence. You have to have a fence, even if you have an auto cover. But from a safety standpoint, I totally get it. You know, layers, you, you can't have enough protection. If you want a fence and you want a cover and you have the money and you can do that, great. But to get the bang for the buck for me, you know, a fence versus an auto cover, a fence, there's no payback. Auto cover here in the Midwest, you know, if you have a heater, it's about $2,000 a year is what we figure. Heating cost, uh, saving chemically treated water from evaporating, $2,000 every year. So if you're paying 10 grand, 12 grand for a cover, whatever, you're getting your, you're getting your money back, actually. Guys are designing backyards now to have a certain look and a feel, right? The auto cover allows them to do that without that obstruction. I mean, you you can leave a gate unlocked or people can hop a fence, but when your cover's closed, you know, you have to have a code to get in there. You don't have to worry about it. What are you seeing in terms of aftermarket pool covers? And we, we try to market to help market to that with our dealers because there's a lot of pools out there that, you know, you, you get those emails and calls all the time of, hey, I'm moving into a house. I had a auto cover where I lived. I want an auto cover. And sometimes you have to say no if it's too extreme. Now, did you see an increase in current pool owners? You know, let's heat the pool. Let's work on the pool. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Replacement covers. So another, here's the nice thing about ours is that once you get one, every six or seven years, you're going to need to replace that fabric. The UV and the chemicals eat its way through there. So a lot of replacement covers going in because people, you know, they're going to spend a lot of time in their backyard now. So they want that looking nice. You know, that stuff we sold 20 years ago. <laughs> let's Let's change that. The other side of that coin is, is sometimes you can cause some some issues keeping it covered too long absolutely do you guys do you guys give a recommendation i mean i always tell people hey you got to open up the cover let things Correct. breathe a little bit it doesn't have to stay open yeah. forever so you're absolutely right there i mean that happens a lot people they leave their covers closed for long periods of time and with the heat building up and chemical or chlorine gases or whatever getting trapped 
it needs to breathe. Yep. So you have to open it up for at least a few hours a week and let let that breathe a little bit. Can you clean the cover mm -hmm. while it's on the pools? Can you use a vinyl brush? You sprinkle some solution, brush mm -hmm. it, rinse it. Can you do that? The best way to do it is standing behind the, the okay. mechanism itself with the cover closed. Clean it, brush it off, and then roll that up five feet and just okay. keep repeating the process. Let's say I go to replace, I want to, I need to replace the cover, right? I don't care what color it is, but the other uh, woman that lives in my house has to oh, match yeah. it to the new patio furniture. How many different options do you guys have? Do you, do you have several options? We have eight. We have eight standard options, and we offer a, a ninth and tenth, which we don't publicly send out there. It's black and like an old aqua. I think the two most popular colors are the charcoal, the beige, the third is probably navy. The darker the color, the warmer the water level will be also. Is there any general maintenance to a pool cover once you've had it installed? Definitely. In the first few years, no. We're to that point now where you really don't have to mess with a cover, hopefully for the first three or four years. The only wearables on a cover, other than the vinyl itself, is that lead edge bar. The front of the cover has two gliders or sliders, depending whose company you're with, what they call them, but they wear down. There's some wearable items that, that need maintenance, not to mention where the cover rolls up gets full of debris. You know, you get all kinds of stuff in there. <laughs> I was working, you know. <laughs> we, could do a, we could do a separate broadcast on that. It's not that kind of show. <laughs> it's exactly that kind of show, Barreza. I did a school when I was a tech. He probably had 20 empty, empty vodka bottles and 20 oh, no Mountain two, two liter Mountain Dews just sprung across the deck. Empty. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> What differentiates APC from other auto cover companies? Good question. Personally, I think the number one thing is just how we treat our dealers. The industry buys, I mean, there's only major three major players now. We, we use some of the same vendors. It's hard to say that my product's better than your product, but we buy it from the same place. It's hard to say product. I think design is something that how it all works together. You know, the type of rope you use. We have a, a touch pad that you can adjust the torque setting and shut that cover off. So when I'm operating the cover and I'm closing it and it hits the end, you know, ours ramps up and then shuts off. Where others, you may be running it, hitting close and it hits, it's still trying to go when it's hitting, if you're still turning the switch. But for me, I think the main difference is just service. It's, it's, it's not nickel and diamond dealers. It's doing what we say we do. A dealer calls up for some screws. I'm not gonna bill him for some screws when he does $100,000 worth of business with us. You know, they appreciate that kind of stuff. That's something to hang our hat on. I mean, it means we're doing it the right way. We're going to change gears a little bit. Yeah. When we talked to Alan mm -hmm. up in Vancouver, he mentioned that all of his visits to your location, he stayed at the worst hotels imaginable. <laughs> I, heard, I, listen, and, I uh, heard that. I heard that last week and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, hey, the Red Roof Inn is only. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I think that was a Hampton Inn. All right, we have to do better then. But it's just right next door to our place. I heard you talk about that, John, about when you went, you had that. Yeah, yeah. I misspoke a little bit uh, on the That's okay. uh, manufacturer. That's all right. uh <laughs> yeah. So, so I, yeah, that was Pool Cover Specialist. That was their place. And, and I had heard that was kind of a cool thing for dealers to get together and hang out after hours and stuff. And that's awesome. But I was wondering, what were you doing there? Do you do covers? I came from the retail service side of things. And uh, yeah, we actually, and so I took a class there. If I yeah. had known you guys were there, I took your class. I didn't know. No, no. <laughs> like at that time, we probably weren't even offering classes. Yeah. Johnny, you could have got nope. their 2003 models. I hear those are the top notch ones. <laughs> There are some some manufacturers out there who kind of just rely on their what they developed and they'll just ride it out. You know, you have to stay involved and keep creating, right? I mean, that's that's part and that's the fun part too for me. Right. I mean, our owners in there, I'm in there. I mean, we're all bouncing ideas. Michael's an idea man. He may throw a hundred things off you. You may not know which one to run with, but he'll make you think about it. Did you guys ever think about getting into uh, impermeable vinyl masks? I know they're a little difficult to work in, but <laughs> we had a, one time well, we had a couple versions of it that went around, but they, they may have slightly been better than our 2003 system. <laughs>
Well, Mike, it was a pleasure talking to you. Really appreciate you guys. You guys have a great thing going. This week, I listened to some of your uh, broadcast, and I really enjoy it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay tuned. I'm going to keep listening and keep sharing your name out there so other people can enjoy it. Take care, brother. He's a really nice guy. And I'm like, yeah, he just put me to shame. <laughs> He's donating shoes to right. Africa and adopting kids. Yoga. I come up with a patent, and I think I've saved the world. Eating kale. I'm a beer and chicken wings kind of guy, you know. <laughs> Unfiltered Legends is recorded using Squadcast and Zencaster. Our show is hosted by Podbean, edited on Adobe Premiere Pro with licensed music from Soundstripe. How do you like the show? We want to hear from you. Contact us at legend at havilandusa.com or leave us a message, 616-365-9515. Unfiltered Legends is brought to you by Haviland Pool and Spa, creative pool chemistry since 1968.